name is Carlos. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today you're going to be getting into a leg session, reviewing diet and strategies for this coming new period of lifting and dieting. So, uh, let's just get right into it. Diet. <clears throat> After a four month bulk, which means that you're eating a considerable amount of food, at least you should be if you're trying to bulk clean food, uh, it's very easy to, for me, the best way to get into the diet is just cut off Trim out the extras, like no extras. Get back to cooking your food, packing your food in your Tupperware and stuff like that, weighing everything out, but make the portions generous. So for the last two weeks, or what's today, the 16th, for the last week, I've been on this, uh, this new period, this new cut, <clears throat> feeling full, feeling full, eating all my meals with enough food that it's like still not restricted. But hey, you want a Coke? No, no Cokes. How about... You know, a whatever, like just an extra that's not cooked. It's, no, 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 no sweets, nothing, you know, nothing whatsoever, which I would indulge in, you know, here and there on my bulk. So the effect of that has been that this week, eating a lot of food, I dropped like three pounds, you know, just instantly dropped. Cardio, where should cardio come in with this first phase of diet? Don't. At least I'm not going to. I did a cardio session the day before my leg session. I believe it was a mistake. So I'm going to restrict that. As long as the weight scale is coming down and the you know I'm still training really hard, what's the need of the cardio? Besides cardiovascular health, of course, but that's not really what we're focusing on. I do warm up with cardio. I am an active person that walks considerably. So that's really not like a consideration for me if if it is for you then I would definitely include at least two 30 minute sessions of cardio a week to keep your fitness level up but I find that just the diet just tightening up just like cutting out the crap or cutting out the extras my weight is coming down and it might be psychological when you're trying to bulk your you know you at least me I'm always checking the weight scale seeing if it's going up if it's going up if I miss a little something on a meal or I don't eat an extra, sometimes I go down. I say, man, it's hard to gain weight. And so the reverse kind of kicks into place where if, if you just relax a little bit on the stuffing yourself, the weight starts to come down really quick. At least it does for me. So that's the strategy. As soon as it hits a plateau for more than a week, then I change the strategy. Either I tighten up the food uh, calorie uh, count or I'll start adding in cardio sessions here and there because you don't want to use all your tools at the beginning this is a mistake like some people that want to get lean this is a process it takes about three to four months to bring your body fat down to like below 10 percent and you know at the outset they start doing five six sessions of cardio a week they'll start using fat burners they'll restrict their calories down to nothing so where where do you go from there why not just take it easy as long as you're losing the weight and then this takes wisdom and experience because people you know we tend to be i don't know what is it called greedy we're in a hurry we're impatient we want to do things now this is my fourth attempt or a fourth cut initiation of a cut and so I know the process by now I, I know how this goes so I don't need to hurry anything up it's I can check my log books this is why you should keep a log book write down what you eat your calories your macros and your training your weight and all of this it, data points really help believe me they help. if you're serious about this if this is something that you want to do and want to succeed at You'll do this correctly, and to do this correctly means writing down everything, having all the data points possible, and keeping a book, keeping a log book or an Excel sheet or whatever you use to track. So, getting into the uh, leg session, Saturday's leg session, it was great. I hit just one PR on the leg, on the vertical leg press. What happened was that I twinged my left adductor on my last on my on the heavy set of the hack squat with six plates i was programmed to do five reps last week's pr was four i'd never done four reps with six plates and so i needed to do five to go above and beyond what i had done and at the second rep 
I knew that I, I just didn't have it. It was feeling very heavy, just extremely overwhelmingly heavy. And on my third attempt, I really gave it my all and I twinged my adductor. I can't call it a pull or a tear or anything like that. It just went, I like, oh, just felt it a little bit. Now that little bit is enough to put the fear of God into me because I know if I go and do a really heavy exercise afterwards, it will tear. It will, you know, get black and blue and it, I'll be out of leg, you know, trainings for, for weeks or maybe months. So I didn't want that. I backed down to four plates and I was going to go for reps. And on the third rep, I still felt the twinge and it was getting a little bit worse. So I said, no. Thinking, what the heck am I going to do to save this session? And all week I've been waiting for this training session and right at the start it's going sideways so what do I do I took a five minute break and went to the uh, leg press the vertical leg press and used it as a massage basically I just put one plate and brought it all the way down and just trying to like just move it very slowly just trying to relax the massage and I felt um, it felt better it was like it just felt better I started to feel a comfort back into the leg it felt comfortable and so I decided to put two plates and it felt very good and a three four long story short got up to five plates and I hit a PR with six plates with uh, six reps I'm sorry so I felt that that kind of redeemed the session there um, that was very satisfying although I was scared the whole time of getting injured and I don't know what got into me or why I did this but I went to the Smith machine the Smith I had not done in months. I don't. I have to check my logbook, but I think it's more than three or four months since I've done the Smith squat, and I've worked up to fairly heavy weights. If you consider four plates plus ass to grass for four to six reps, heavy. That's what I was doing, but it was bothering my knees, and so I stopped that. And my knees are completely healed. They're doing great, but I decided to go do this Smith squat today, and to be honest, it went great. It went great. Start out very light with one plate, all the way down, all the way down. That's why you use the pin so you can like adjust and like way below parallel. Blink, you know, it just felt really easy. No stress on the knee. I put on two plates and finished with a three plate times five rep on the Smith. But it was like biomechanically perfect. I was really grooving on it. I was happy doing those. I says, man, I'm getting my strength back on the Smith. My adductor didn't give me any pain doing this. And, you know, three big compounds. Because I did do two reps with the six plates. I mean, that's a big effort. So, you know, it wasn't like a total bomb on the hack. I would have loved to do more, but couldn't. And on the Smith, just, uh, it was very productive. Very, very productive, psychologically at least. And then when it finished with the leg extensions, as we usually do, the only novelty there is that I shortened the angle on the, on the bottom pad which makes it easier, but also creates a greater effectiveness on the quad, in my opinion. So that's what I did. 110, 160, and 190 were the poundages for 10, 12 reps. My legs were pumped, felt great, and it was just an overall great session. Had plenty of energy, but always in the back of my mind, don't do cardio, at least don't jog the day before you're going to do these heavy leg sessions that was like my thought maybe carb up more i don't know i got to investigate because i don't want to get injured and i do want to continue training as hard as i can so that's that's just basically it for today we'll keep it short i'll do the narrated video the training video which is pretty self-explanatory and that'll be it guys you know god bless everybody you know i really love you all thanks for supporting me in this journey and just getting better as we get older, I don't want to bring age into it because I feel it's a gimmick. I feel people use that when you're young. You know, I don't know. It's like the people that take their years off, they will add years. It's just, it's baloney. I'm just, I really just want to say that you can always get better. At least I'm getting better. I'm getting stronger and I'm feeling great. So thank God for that. And keep training. Keep, you know, your... Keep at it. The diet is 99%, 90% of the deal. If you eat well, if you're eating restricted uh, calories, you will get muscular. If you eat a lot of protein, low fat, low carb, and train heavy and do some cardio, you will get muscular. You will increase. 
And if you keep a logbook, if you track your lifts, you'll grow faster. <laughs> God bless everybody. Take, take care. So here, as usual, we start off with a very light weight, just with one plate, trying to get into the groove of the movement, making sure everything's nice and tight, going all the way down, full range of motion. You know, I, I really like to take advantage of these type of apparatus to do a complete and full range of motion. There's a time and a place to do partials. God knows that I do, <coughs> but, <coughs> excuse me, with this particular machine, it's so safe as far as, you know, when it comes to failure that there's really no reason why, why not to take full advantage of the full range of motion. So here we're just warming up with one plate, trying to get the muscles activated. I got it into my mind today to do slower reps, which I believe is a big, big, big no-no when you're trying to go for strength. You know, some top bodybuilders, a lot of people, they, you know, you can use these slow intensifiers once you're doing your, your reps, but when you're going for strength, you want speed. You want to move the weight as, fa as fast as possible. And so that's, you know, I believe that's a bit of a mistake, but for warming up, it's fine. Here we're going with two plates and just trying to get the nice range of the uh, exercise. It's feeling good starting to feel good with this exercise. It's getting more comfortable. It used to feel very heavy just from the start on my first attempts, like a few months back. It was very difficult for me. Three plates was like my max. I did a three plate times 10 rep, and that was like my PR that time, and I felt great that day. But three plates is, is now feeling very light. So we're just doing a few reps here to get the, to prime the muscle for the heavy set. You don't want to burn out get very tired and fatigued on your way up this ladder because to get to six plates, you have to take your time. It's like cl climbing Mount Everest. You have to stop at base camp and then you go for, for you know, you move up slowly. You don't just jump up to the top. You'll get hurt. And even then, it's, you know, you're at risk of, of maybe harming yourself. So here with five plates. Now we go for the six plates and here, <clears throat> right from the start, as usual, it felt extremely heavy. Like, it was just, oh my god. Oh, that's heavy shit. On the second rep, I knew that there was no way I was going to get five reps. But I was going to go for it anyways. I repositioned a little bit. And then on my third attempt, I failed. Now, here I kind of twinged my, like, my left adductor. It felt a little twinge up by the groin, the inner groin. And so I, you know, I decided I can't do another attempt. I'll bring the weight down to four plates and try to do reps. I'll try to go for 20. But it was still in pain a little bit, and it was getting worse as, you know, on my second rep I felt it. On my third rep I said, no way. Nope, I'm not going to risk it. That's enough for today on the hack squad. Bummer. I wish I could have done more work on the on the hack squat. So I went to the leg press more with the idea of just massaging the leg because it was hurting a little bit and bringing it all the way down, getting extreme range of motion with very slow movement. And to be honest, it felt very good. It felt like a massage. It felt very, very healing doing this stretch thing here. It was very easy, obviously. It's just one plate is very easy. And so I'm thinking to myself the whole time, what am I going to do to save this leg session? You know, all week long I've been waiting. All week long I, you know, I'm programmed to go and do my PRs, to do more than last time, to train harder. And, you know, the session's not going well because the hack squat, I failed at it. So now what am I going to do? So I put on two plates here. And it's starting to feel even better. It's like, because usually this exercise is adductor intensive. For some reason, I did not feel the adductor at all, by the grace of God. And so I continued. I said, well, just hang out here for a bit and just work on this. And don't really worry about the rest of the routine. Just try to work through it and don't think too much about it. We'll see where it goes from here. Since it felt so good, felt very confident, I put on the third plate, three plates. And again, instead of feeling any discomfort whatsoever on the on the adductor it was feeling really good 
I'm feeling strong here. I said, like, okay, this is, like, easy. Push, 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 push. And it was, like, it's just feeling easy going all the way down, full range of motion, or at least as, as far down as you can go with the vertical. And so I decided to put four plates. Now, here I'm starting to feel a bit nervous. I said, be very careful because, you you know, this is weight. This is a vertical leg press. Those are 400 pounds that you're pushing up. And, again, it was just feeling really good. Thank God. Just, you know, getting the proper range there. So I stopped at just three reps, put on five plates. And I wasn't thinking of a PR or anything like that. I was just saying, how is it going to feel just doing one? And it felt good, so I went for the second one. And I just kept on going. <clears throat> and three. And here, pause for a second. Got the fourth rep. And then here I knew that I had a PR. I knew I could do two more. So here I got the five. And on the last rep, it was very, very hard. Like this was, I was pushing with everything I had. But got it. It was a PR. I'd never done that before in my life. Here went to the Smith machine. I don't like to put my feet way out in front like some people like to do. Like they're leaning back, like they're almost laying down. I find that a bit awkward. It doesn't work for me. So I situate myself pretty much like a standard squat, just straight underneath. And it was feeling biomechanically perfect. I was feeling all the force production where it should be. My knees were feeling great. Um, here, so I put on two plates. I haven't done this exercise in months. I have to check the logbook, but I believe it's like over four months that I have not done a Smith squat. And these two plates were feeling really easy. It's like, Again, the force production from proper biomechanics, like pressing with the f your foot with your heel in such a way that no joint is out of place. The um, the hip flexion also. There's a lot of strength in the hips, a lot of strength in the upper leg, and so we decided to go for three plates. And here we got, I think, five reps. Five reps with the three plates, and again, just easy. For me, this was easy. I was thinking, man, I could go up to four plates today. I said, leave well enough alone. You're still dealing with that adductor thing. And here, I was trying to feel the adductor and said, nope, it's not really, it's not being too involved in this lift. It's like the outer sweep of the thigh, everything but. And so that was going great. Uh, really, really enjoyed this Smith. It brought me back up again from a failed session in my in my assessment. I said, you know, the, the hack squat, that was the principal thing all week long, and I failed at it. And so it's a bit of a, not depressing, but you do have to regroup. It's a, it's You lose a battle in the big scheme of things, but that doesn't mean that you're losing the war. So I adjusted and went to the Smith and conquered there. And here we went to the leg extensions, as I usually do and finished off with three sets. So that was basically it, guys, with this uh, session. Saved a uh, disaster, made a little bit of progress, got a PR, and uplifted myself psychologically for next week. Uh, a word on cardio, I think it was my hardcore session the day before. Maybe I didn't carb up enough. I don't know what it is, but I have to investigate. It might be both. It might be both. If you are a little tiny bit carb depleted and your muscle is fatigued from cardio, perhaps six plates on the hack squat, if that's your limit, may not be the wisest thing. So I will be learning and adjusting as I go on. And in case it was an overall session that was saved from the jaws of defeat. Really looking forward to next week. So that was basically it. God bless everybody. I'll leave you with these images, and we'll see you next time.